Down before I succumb to eat stroke. Ooh. We're getting a wee bit broad in the beam, eh, Ducky? Oh, we are gonna die here. We're absolutely gonna die. Well, I hope you're satisfied. You're not insinuating this is my fault. <laughs> if the shoe fits, Ducky, we'll go to America, he says. No one will find us there, he says. Find us. Would even come looking for it in an L hole like this. You're a bit short on memory, love. We wouldn't be in this pickle if you'd been a wee bit more prudent in your removal of Lord Cunningham's silver. Yeah, well, need I remind you, my sweet Reggie, <laughs> that it was you his lordship fought red and selling off his prized livestock. I could have talked my way out of that one, free and clear, I could. That is, if her ladyship hadn't walked in on you, ducks, rubbing noses with her beloved husband, Barnaby. Yeah, right. Well, it's that that kept us out of Romsford Prison, you might recall. So says you. Yeah, so says I. Fancy the idea of 20 years. Now, did you, sweetheart? Well, at least I didn't forsake my holy marriage vows. My poor mother must be spinning in her grave <laughs> about now. <gasps> What have we here? The Archbishop of Canterbury? Well, excuse me, Your Holiness, but I do hope you recall that the old buzzard never laid his hands on me. Yeah, well, that's because her ladyship walked in on you before the geezer could drop his drawers. So says you! So says I. Oh. Meet the Mimsers, Reggie and Clarice. Acting as butler and maid, they've enjoyed a checkered career bilking their wealthy employers. They've arrived in the American West hoping to escape British law, but they will soon meet justice of a different kind, doled out by the dead man's gun. Uh, Mr. Morganston, sir, the solicitor. At for service. Uh, begging your indulgence, sir, we're the Mimsers. We've been engaged as servants by Colonel Horace Buckthorn. He paid for our fare all the way from Liverpool, the Colonel did. Yes, yes, of course. I've been expecting you. I handle all the Colonel's business affairs. Please. Um, here are our references, Your Lordship. Lordship? Oh, good grief. No, no, madam. This is America. We've no lords here. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure I'll find these in order. We didn't even look at them. After all that time I spent making them up. Mr. and Mrs. Mimser, I feel obligated to inform you that serving the Colonel is no easy task. There have been a number of servants before you, none of whom have lasted very long. Well, is there anything wrong with the bloke? I mean, there was nothing in his correspondence that indicated... No, 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 nothing like that. Colonel Buckthorn is quite healthy, only getting on in years and, uh, well, being an ex-Confederate Army officer, he is, uh, shall we say, set in his ways and uh, just a little uh, eccentric. He lives all alone in a large house on what was at one time a very productive ranch. It's over 20 miles from town, rather isolated, I must add. And far enough away from the coppers, I might add. Right, here we are. The reason I tell you all this is that you will have to sign contracts. Contracts? A formality the Colonel insists upon, for your mutual benefits, of course. The Colonel guarantees your salary and the term of your service. You agree that early withdrawal results in a forfeiture of all pay. I'll give you a few moments to look over the contracts. So call me when you're done. What do you think you're doing? What's it look like? I'm reading the blooming contract. Have you lost your mind, minuscule though it may be? Honestly, we are here looking for a pigeon, not a career. Oh, just so 
find the things and let's get on with it. Is it? Bloody hell. Well, it's a cinch we won't be finding no pigeon in a dump like this. <gasps> oh, oh. Take that, you little vermin. I warn you, sir. I don't abide trespassing. Uh, we're, 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 we're the Mimsers, General. Colonel, sir. Uh, but, uh, Reggie and Clarice fr from England? Uh, it, uh, you, uh, you hired us to be your servants. Y'all were due yesterday. I detest tardiness. Uh, begging your pardon, Colonel, sir, but we was due tomorrow. We're an old day early. I also detest earliness. Tardiness is what I admire and insist on. Don't just stand there. I don't pay for loafers. There are chores to be done. I intend to get my money's worth out of y'all. Dismissed. <gasps> ah, you bushy tail rats. And stay out of my trees. Nobody gets the best of Colonel Horace Buckthorn. Nobody. Oh, Reg, what have we done? We died, love. That's what we've done. Must have, because we're in hell now. I mean, look at this. Less than nothing, in the middle of nowhere, with a crackpot as our lord and master. Blimey. I'm gonna work our fingers to the bone in this pigsty, Reg. I mean, why would you want to live like this? No, 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 hang about. What we have here is a balmy old geezer, but he hires a lawyer, he does, and draws up contracts. That's not what a poor man would do. Why are you all just standing there? Your quarters are being this old. Now get it up here, Mimsers. Y'all are my time now. Clean this. And do it proper. A clean weapon is a reliable one. Never forget that. Centric, you say? Braving lunatic, more like. You know, have a look at this. Now, that's as fine a piece of gunsmithing as I've ever laid my eyes on. Hardly military issue. Hmm, worth a pretty penny, I bet. Fit for a king. Now, where would the bloke get something like this? You know what I think, love? I think there's more to this here house than meets the eye. I says we bides our time, make like good little servants, keep our eyes and our ears open. 
We might just find us some uh, hidden assets. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Mimsers. Afternoon, sir. Afternoon, sir. Meals will be served at the stroke of 7 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. Tea at half past nine and four. Under no circumstances will any deviation from this schedule be tolerated. Rooms will be cleaned downstairs first, then upstairs, always moving east to west. Do I make myself clear? Y yes, sir. As for you, Mimsa, I expect my boots shine, my guns cleaned, my sword polished, horses tended to daily. I am to be awakened promptly at dawn. My bed turned down exactly at 8.45 p.m. and I retire faithfully at nine. Yes, sir. Here are the menus for the week. This table here is to be set for guests at all times. I would be mortified if folks were to arrive unexpectedly and we were not prepared. Yes, sir. Uh, how often do you have guests, Colonel? That is not the point, ma'am, sir. One must always be prepared. He's balmy. He's absolutely balmy. Aha! Gotcha, you little tree rat. <sighs> there he goes, popping off at them squirrels again. Poor little things. They don't know anybody. I think he hates him so much. Up here. He's a few ingredients short of the complete recipe, you know what I mean? Truth is, he ain't hit one squirrel yet. Yeah, he's crackers. That would make us the same. Well, what about him reading the old newspapers? Ancient business. Civil war has never ended for him. Two weeks. Feels more like two bloody years. Tell you, love, I'm getting a sinking feeling. Unless we find something valuable real soon, we're going to be stuck in this bloody asylum for a long time. Oh, hello. He's left his drawer open. It's normally locked up tight. Yeah. Rich, come and look at this. Blimey. I knew it, I knew it. Stock certificates. The old bugger's worth a blooming fortune. Can we cash him in? Afraid not, ducks. They got his name on them. But then what's got stock got cash. Here now, what's this? Box number one, 1377. Box two, 2392. Box three, 503. Box four, 1789. Well, what's it mean? Don't know. But I'd like to find out. Here, yeah, love, copy that down. Clean up the squirrels. Rich, wake up. Shh. Come on, have a look. Oh, come on. <sighs> What's he doing? Well, I don't know. I can't see, Rach. Can you?
Money. $39.40. That sneaky bastard, he buries his money. Ten. Reg, the list, you had me copy. There were ten boxes. And the number after the box is how much cash he has in it. Bloody hell. There's a fortune buried out here. Oh, no way. Well, what are we going to do? We'd take his month to just dig up this yard, but he's assuming old Buckthorn with letters which he ain't gonna. The book. The one he had in his hand. It's all in the book, it is. I bet on it. The fool's too dotty to remember where he buried all them boxes, so he writes down the exact location of each one. We need that book, love. It's got to be here someplace. We've looked everywhere. Not everywhere. There's not much time, Reg. Thank you fool me, mister. Not for a minute. I, I, I beg your pardon, sir? I know what y'all up to, you and the missus. And I will not let y'all get away with it. What, 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 what's that, sir? Y'all aim to take most of the roast beef. I know. R roast beef? I seen y'all eat. You and the missus. And y'all eat entirely too much. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, Colonel, sir. It, it won't happen again. Uh, 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 Clarice and I will uh, cut down on our portions, sir. Uh, promise I do. Did you get it? No. He's got a locked drawer in his nightstand. There's a key round his neck. I see it, love, every day when I dress the old goat. He never takes it off, not even to bathe. I never knew what it was for. Till now. I'd lay odds the book is in that drawer. Yeah, but I mean, if he never takes it off, then how are we meant to get it? He had that damn gun. Sleeping with it, he was. In his hand, the madman. Like to blow me head off. I was going to wait you, sir, because uh, I just made some nice, fresh ass tea. How thoughtful of you. Uh, it's my pleasure, Colonel. Sir, um, now if you'd be so kind as to let go of me and... I've been watching you. Watching me? You are a fine-looking woman. Smooth skin, thin. Delicate waist. Me, sir? Yes, Clarice. You. And I like that in a woman. <laughs> oh, go 
got on with you, sir. I've seen it all, love. Right through the window. Yeah, well, it gave me a fright, he did, demented old bugger. He fancies you, he does. You know what? You're as daft as he is, ducky. I've seen the way he looks at you. He does not. Oh, he does. He watches you when you have the serving tray and you're walking down the stairs. He watches the way your buns move, he does. He's forgotten about all that stuff years ago, and besides, he's old enough to be my grandfather. He's a man, love. And a man don't stop being a man till they're throwing dirt in his face. What is going on in that dirty little mind of yours, Reg? He's got an itch for you, he has. Why not make it a blooming rash? A wiggle of that little arse of yours, a flash of your bosoms, a little rubby-dubby passing in the hall, maybe a glimpse of you in your bloomers, or less. You want me to let him have his way with me? We've got to get that key, love. Have you added up their numbers? I have. $10,531.59. Have you ever seen change like that? I ain't. Now, if you was to let him get into your knickers real good, he's sure to fall asleep after. Now, it's a cinch you won't be having the gun with him when he's uh, doing it, so getting the key should be a snap. You gives it to me, I gets the book, we're rich. Christ, Rachel, might as well do it with one of them Egyptian mummies. I mean, what do you think I am? I know what you are, love. And you've done worse for a lot less. Oh, so it's to me what's left of me. Self-respect what makes us rich. Is that right, Reg? You got a better idea, my sweet? You know what? I've done a lot of things, I have. But I have never... Well, I don't see no pension plans in our future, do you? What about your mother and our precious marriage vows? Stakes are high enough. I can overlook me vows. Then I'll just turn Mother's picture to the wall. <sighs> Damn, the butcher, Sherman. Oh, if I could have had a fighting command instead of supply, I could have stopped the northern rabble. The nut is reading them old newspapers again. <laughs> That's better. No chap can resist a good peek. You look fetching, love. You'd bring half a quid on any street in London. Oh, you do have a way with words, Reg. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, no, 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 no. We have to make it look more, uh, inviting, don't we? Now, that's more like it. Hang about. Anything worth doing, love. Oh, just leave it out, Reg. You're gonna give the old geezer an heart attack. Elderberry hot cakes, Colonel. Your favourite. Mm. And tasting, my dear. Absolutely enticing. Thank you, sir.
there. I must have you, my dear. I must. Oh, yeah, but Reggie, so he's, he's outside. I don't know what he'd do if he caught us. Damn, Reggie! I will not be denied. Your Colonel, stop! Stop! Oh, not here. Not now. He's about to trip over his tongue, he is. So, he wants me to pick a fight with you so that we have separate bedrooms, and then he wants to sneak into me room tonight and do the bump uglies. We got him, love. We got the cheeky bastard. What the hell happened? I waited up for you half the night I did. I'm exhausted. <laughs> well, what happened was, after he was done having his way, he gets up and he goes to his room. That's what happened. Damn. Damn that loony bastard! You'll just have to do it again. No. I mean, anything but that. It was torture. It was bloody torture. And this time, keep him the night. Good morning, my dear. Good morning, sir. You were... Magnificent. See you tonight. What happened this time? Well, uh, I got him to stay the night this time. There's no stroll in the park, neither. What happened? He fell asleep. I couldn't move him with a team of hawks, and I couldn't. Try again tonight, then, won't I? Enjoying it. Oh, yeah, right. 
Right, Rog, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, about as much as a swim in January without me clothes on. Is that the truth? Oh, it's the truth, you want, is it, Reg? Oh, OK, Reg. Right, well, um, the truth is that the, uh, the old man's got a spark, you know? Which is more than I can say about you. That's oh. it! I've had enough. Oh. You get that key tonight, Claire. Or else. Huh. Well, it's about bloody time. Be quiet. He's still sleeping. We're going to kill him. Rich. You know, I may be a thief, but I am no murderer. Look, you know, going to Romford Prison for a couple of years is one thing, but being hung by the neck... You never said nothing about no murder. Well, I'm saying it now, ain't I? All right, I get it. You want to kill the old geezer because he's given me something you never have, is that right? You know what? You are a fool. It was you what got me to diddle him in the first place. And it was you what got me not to complain. Well, I never intended you to become Romeo and Juliet. <gasps> oh. Still, never mind, eh? It's too late now. We're going to kill him. And that is that. You're with me on this, love, ain't ya? I said you're in, ain't ya? Morning, sir. Oh, good morning, my dear. Beast. I just cannot tolerate anything or anyone insinuating themselves in my business. What's the matter, my dear? What's troubling you? It's, um, it's Reggie, sir. He's, uh, he's onto us and, um, he's so jealous and he frightens me because I don't know what he might do if he was to find us together. I will not. Give you up, my sweet, for no man. Oh, Horace, I've never met anyone like you, anyone that ever treats me like you do. I'd do anything for you, love, for it. We must not let that scoundrel come between us. Here, take this. You must protect yourself at any cost, my dear. Cleans it every day, I does. After he shoots at his bloody squirrels. So now he gives it to you to kill me. Well, I'll make him wish he never owned his fancy gun. We're gonna finish it tonight, love. I'll pretend to go into town for a night at the pub. You invites the Colonel to your room, but make sure he gives you a few minutes what to make yourself ready for him. Then, when he enters, well, we'll be telling folks he tried to violate you and you was forced to shoot him with his own gun. Do we have to kill him, Reg? I mean, ain't there any other way? You're going soft on me, ducky. Or was I right? The old goat's tickling your fancy. I just don't think we... Let me put it to you this way, love. 
Someone's going to die here tonight. You get my drift. Where's the bloke? You didn't do it. You didn't kill him. I couldn't. I already told you I'm not a murderer. Then who fired the shot? I did. I knew it would bring you running. You double-crossing little... First rule, a warfare minister is the element of surprise. It was a simple matter to take the gun away from her. A good officer always knows the limitations of his troops. I'm going to miss you, ma'am, sir. You made a fine cup of English tea. like we talked about, Oris. Ain't that true? I truly hate to disappoint you, sweetheart. But y'all didn't really think I was going to run off with you, did you? I knew what y'all were planning from the very beginning. A little black book y'all were looking for? Yeah. There's nothing in it. It's just a little game I like to play. Oh, there's money out there in my garden. Lots of it. And there is a map. It's right here. It's all rather ironic, don't you think? Y'all wanted to kill me. Instead, I'm killing y'all. Oh, I just don't understand. Why? Oh. Life insurance, my dear. The policies were attached to your contracts. But y'all never did take the time to read them, did you? Well, don't feel bad. No one ever does. I count on that. But signing, you and Reggie made me your sole beneficiary. Nothing happens to y'all, I collect. It's a bit like gambling. You bet you live. I bet you don't. Looks like I win. A princely sum, I might add. Five thousand dollars on each of you. You... You planned all this from the beginning. I did. I do regret what I must do, my sweet peach. You said you love me! <laughs> but I do. I truly do. But I love money a bit more. Oh, please, Aris. I can make you happy. I really, I really can. You will be found with your husband's body on top of you. He was smothering you. 
and with your last dying breath, you shot Sweet dreams. <laughs> darling uh, I was aiming at you you bitch wasn't as mad as he appeared, even to his hatred of squirrels. Since a tree was his bank, he needed to keep them away from the money. As for Clarice, when she tired of digging, all she had left was the dead man's gun. <laughs> 